I believe that educational progressivism is the problem here. We are actually going to prepare them for the future, for jobs that don't exist at this moment in time, for terminology that hasn't even been created. We need to recognise the powers of young people and start to build those. As a teacher or even a parent, you might be the guardian or the enabler for the young person who is going to come up with the solutions that save the planet. It's about the survival of the species, isn't it, really? Learning Without Frontiers is a global platform for dialogue and discourse about radical transformation um, in learning. It's a dialogue about why we need to change and what we might change to beyond hosting our online communities. We hold an annual conference which brings together people in the physical space to meet each other, to debate, share the things that work, talk about the things that haven't worked. Our role in this is to bring together thinkers from across the spectrum, to bring in new ideas from different fields that are related to learning. An encyclopedia everyone can edit? That's the worst idea ever. I would rather have in the scientific canon the risk-taking students and maybe even the drug-taking students. The sort of words that people use to describe our conference are challenging, provocative, disruptive. This is not a traditional conference about education as it is today, but a conference about learning as it is tomorrow. We are attracting people who effectively will start the conversation, bringing to the table new ideas about how we learn. A very broad constituency of thinkers, policy makers, practitioners, whether it's the Astronomer Royal talking about what's ahead of us in terms of our planet, people from the entertainment world, the social political theorists like Noam Chomsky, to educational visionaries like Sir Ken Robinson, but also artists, designers, futurists, entrepreneurs, environmentalists. The Earth faces phenomenal challenges, formidable challenges ahead. And if we're not aware of those challenges, how do we know what kind of skills our young people, whether they're in school or university, will need to have? If you can make education beautiful, customized, shared, and real, then everybody wins. What we're seeing now is an exponential shift that I think is as significant as the Industrial Revolution was. If you have an expanded population of 7 billion people and you start connecting them all up to the internet so they can all talk to each other, something is going to change. Technology has to fundamentally change what we're teaching, what we're learning, what we're assessing. And that's not happening in a broad way around the world and that's something we've got to move on to. You need to be thinking of an education system which is takes into account the changes in the digital landscape and we, we haven't really done that. We see a lot of technology in our universities and in our, in our classrooms, but they're not transforming um, the learning process and not improving learning outcomes. We're spending our time with devices and smart boards and technology in service of what? We've got education plus technology and then wondering why nothing's changed. It's not a replacement for applied learning, basically. It's not a replacement either for experience. Let's look at what the, the, the things within education that are preventing transformation from occurring. Wouldn't it be great if we had a curriculum that was challenging, that was exciting, that the children used and learned new skills? What young people do outside of the, the classroom, what they're, when they're at home, whether they're playing a video game or whether they're making a YouTube clip, what they're doing is they're engaging in their own um, self-pacing, self-assessed digital curriculum. What can we learn from that and bring in to the classroom? If we're going to change the way we learn, from the way that we've been doing it for the past 200 years, we better get it right. If we get it wrong, you're jeopardising an entire generation of young people. The dialogue on the future of learning that we're hosting is entirely crucial to be happening now because the challenges that our society and our planet faces are happening now.